We all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. Rates are phenomenal. Um, again, they're down around in the high 3% range. Uh, a lot of clients are getting um, uh, 4%, no points, no closing cost refinances. So again, if you're in that 4.5 uh, plus range on a 30-year fixed, it might be worth a phone call. Um, you know, One of the things that we did a lot this week, um, we took about $10 million in just refinance uh, transactions, but mm-hmm. a lot of people um, were moving out of their PMI. So people that pay monthly PMI on their on their bill. Right. So what is PMI? Tell me a little bit about that. Private mortgage insurance. So if, okay. if, if, a, if a client is putting less than 20% down, um, mortgage insurance uh, policy, a mortgage insurance policy is required on that loan. Mm-hmm. There's two different ways you can pay it. You can pay it as a line item on your bill. So, okay, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, mortgage insurance. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you can pay it inside your interest rate. Um, now, no, wait, 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 hold on. So, so if I if I have it as a separate line item, obviously uh, that's not tax deductible, and we're not tax advisors. They can certainly seek advice there. But well, cur- currently this year, what so what the government does is they put uh, in a bill that renews every year if mortgage insurance is tax deductible this year or not tax gotcha. deductible. This year in 2014, it is not tax deductible. Who knows what's going to happen in 15? Got it. Um, but what is always tax deductible is mortgage interest. Uh, at least for now, you know, it, knock on wood. Exactly. Um, so what we do is, if you know, if someone is is, um, we might even go up a little bit higher on their interest rate, mm-hmm. but not, uh, but uh, get rid of their monthly PMI. And typically, on average, I would say the majority of my clients save about one hundred and ten dollars a month just by paying your mortgage insurance a little bit differently. Wow. Now, uh, okay, so so you increase the rate. Yep, and then you build the PMI into the rate, right. and you what you're essentially saying is that the lender is paying for the mortgage insurance premium right. as a result of the increased rate, right. and now you're creating a win-win situation for the borrower, whereby now they can take advantage of the interest reductions, right? Uh, and that's and that's, their payment is overall lower. Uh, let's talk about people that currently own properties today. Winter's coming around the corner. What should people be doing to really make sure they they preserve you know different things around their home. Yeah, they should be going out and trying to start to winterize. Uh, big thing, wait till all the leaves are gone and make sure your gutters are clean. Uh, clean, empty gutters are going to help prevent ice dams. So that's an important thing. Uh, once you get all your leaves raked up, it'll give you a good chance. You're behind the bushes, cut all your bushes back, expose the house a little bit more that you've been putting off all summer. Hmm. And then at that point, check the grading as well. Uh, you want to make sure that all the soil pitches away from the house instead of towards the house. We're going to have five months of either rain or snow sitting up against there. So if you can move the moisture away from the foundation instead of towards it, it's going to help keep water out of the basement. Right. Um, covering your air conditioning unit, uh, there's different uh, schools of thought on that. Some people don't like to see it covered all the way around. Uh, I'm just concerned that you protect the top portion of the uh, air conditioning unit so falling ice can't get down into the, where the motor is. So even if you just put a piece of plywood with a rock on top of it, that will protect the top of it. Some people cover it with a tarp. Uh, so you could look at doing that. Um, going around your house looking for any openings, you know, any areas that you're going to get... Uh, you know, wind blowing through during a heavy storm, getting your heating system tuned up so you're ready for the winter. You know, just going around making sure the house is buttoned up. Um, caulking is your friend. You know, go around right. if you find any areas with gaps. Make sure that they're sealed up. Um, storm windows, make sure they're caulked into place. And it's also a good time to go around and uh, look for any rot on the exterior of the house where everything will be cut back and cleared. Mm-hmm. Give you a chance to make your little honey-do list for the spring to for the areas oh. that you need to repair. Sweet. And in case of Rick, is honey, don't do. <laughs> honey, don't do. Call someone stat. Preferably insured. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> excellent, um, excellent advice. I mean, I think I think a lot of the homeowners really, uh, they, they forget that one of the most important parts of the house is the outside of the house. And I, I, think, I think not uh, looking out for those uh, rot, uh, sort of signs of initial mm-hmm. signs of rot or not doing the necessary caulking could cost you a lot of money. Absolutely. And for people like Rick, we actually have a service where we go out and uh, we'll take a look at your house for you and basically do like a second home inspection. Now you've lived there for a few years and we can tell you, you know, what you haven't been doing and what you should be doing <laughs> oh, to your yeah. house so that you're not going to have any issues. 
what are you seeing in terms of the demographic of the buyer that's purchasing units in the city? Sure, it's really changing. And so you have the baby boomers who are coming in from the city, uh, from the suburbs into the city. You have uh, lots of young professionals that are buying as well. And really internationally, uh, you have buyers coming in that are buying at 45 Province, Millennium Place, all these luxury buildings that have amenities, elevator. Um, it's really unique. We're seeing a different type of demographic as a buyer in downtown Boston. Yeah, so the first time home buyer looking to buy in the back bay is sort of uh, out the door to some degree. Is that just, fair just, to say? To some degree, unless they're buying small and uh, and hopefully you know owning it and then potentially transitioning into the suburbs. And what oh. we really see is that they often hold on to that condo uh, mm-hmm. and become a long-term uh, investor. It's a really good investment to hold on, and they become a non-occupant condo owner. So they've got the condo in the city, and then they've got the house in the suburbs. Right. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, which, uh, you know, it, there's a part of me that makes me nervous uh, about all these various projects in, this, in South Boston, in, the, in uh, Boston proper. Uh, what makes uh, the city so unique in your perspective as people that have been doing real estate for such a long time? I mean, I almost have flashbacks of 2006 and seven, where in uh, cities like Miami, where towers were going up, and then obviously we saw the the massive disaster and the meltdown. I I personally don't see that happening in the city, but I want to hear your perspectives as real estate professionals. Well, we are part of a global economy, of course, so anything can happen. Miami has come back very strong, and you notice that. Yeah, and it, it really comes down to the number of clients that are looking to buy versus looking to rent. So there's been a lot of those buildings that are actually rental buildings, and not as many have been condo buildings, mm-hmm. which has benefited the market in downtown Boston. Uh, as well as there's so many international investors that see the value in Boston, the universities, the hospitals, uh, the financial sector. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very unique biotech. Google's here. I could go on and on and on. Sure, right, sure. But uh, yeah, there's there's so many different sectors that makes it really unique. I think you touch on a number of different factors, which truly sets us apart from the rest of the cities uh, around the world. I think I think we have a very very unique skill set here that draws professionals in here that contain uh, continues to sustain our micro economy here, and I think it makes it very very unique, and I think less susceptible in uh, sort of the ups and downs of the global. As you as you're mentioning it, uh, Doug, uh, of the ups and downs, I'd be now, curious. I'd be curious to throw it out there, and I don't know the answer to this question. But what percentage of the people that are pre-sold at the Millennium are investors, are international investors, there, or are they moving, selling their house in Wellesley and Weston and Lexington, and and wanting to be in the city? Uh, do, does anybody have a flavor to, to of what we're seeing as far as who those buyers have been? Is it is it all international money? Is it you know is it people baby boomers retiring? So they won't release that information, but what I can tell you in terms of Millennium Place, which was a similar project that was sold, the fastest selling building in Boston's history, is that there are a lot of international investors. Uh, and typically a building like that will cap the number of investors to ensure that they can get financing and there's more owner occupants than investors. Right. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? Yeah, I mean you definitely don't want a, a a unit to look like a rental, you know, to be like a like a apartment building. Everybody's you know, they're condos but everybody's renting from there. So um, it's really important to, to protect the integrity of the, the owner occupancy and, and, and that sort of things. So.